And with atomic clock timing, Bill Whittle predictably peddled the new narrative right on cue, never burdened by the slightest curiosity to wonder how Cheney's absolute certainty could be so hollow. But since we now know that the fear of the invasion caused Saddam to destroy his stockpiles before the invasion, WMDs were not in fact found. And you've been told that this means that the war was based on a lie, despite the fact that every intelligence agency in the world thought that Saddam had weapons of mass destruction. Those tortured talking points need to be put out of their misery. And I know of no one better for that than Great Thielman. I emailed him to ask how he would respond to Whittle, Whittle's common claim. And one of the most telling aspects to his answer was that the technicality of literal truth and the manufactured myth. Thielman acknowledged that nearly everybody thought that Saddam had hidden away some mustard agent left over from the 1980s. But he added that the Bush administration did not make his case for war on the strength of suspicions that Iraq retained World War I era munitions. It's the second half of that statement that Whittle and company conveniently ignore. Tillman also pointed out that few intelligence agencies had independent means of evaluating U.S. intelligence. He brings up the infamous Downing Street memos that explicitly state, quote, Bush wanted to remove Saddam through military action, justified by the conjunction of terrorism and WMD, but the intelligence and facts were being fixed around the policy. Tillman elucidates one fine point after another for over a page, Germans on the unreliability of curveball, IAEA on the tubes and uranium from Africa reports, DIA reversing its position on the drones before the invasion. And as Tillman talked about on the PBS Frontline, a senior Australian intelligence analyst resigned in protest over the fabricated intelligence. I have included his, his email in its entirety as part of Supplemental Materials Exhibit A, which includes a clip of Prime Minister Tony Blair ignoring British intelligence that rejected the aluminum tubes. As for that abysmal absurdity about Saddam destroying his stockpiles out of fear, Bill Whittle and his world gleefully turned a technicality into a fairy tale that he could stand there and make that claim without a scrap of evidence is on par with the seekers in their saucer. Same goes for the crowd that saturated the airways to manufacture an image of innocence around Trayvon. <laughs>